Okay, so my reaction on Amazon and their decision to go to DC and New York. First, I'm going to say, because I did a video and then I deleted it because it was a little long or too wordy. I just gotten up not too long ago and yeah, I got to go to the dentist. The feeling fell out, so I'm not feeling that. But anyway, um, I think for DC, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think that 25,000 employees there is not a huge deal because it's going to be built over time. But I do think in both places, New York and in D.C., they're going to experience uh, a lot of issues. Um, you have cities that cannot spread out. They have to spread up. So the... Uh, the cost of infrastructure in those cities are going to be pretty high. Um, you know, keep in mind that even though the the locations that Amazon's going to go have subway systems, expect those subway systems to be challenged, right? They will be challenged. Uh, yeah, in the location in New York, they're building a lot of residential spaces there. And... Um, you know, they were talking about that. Also in the Arlington area, same thing. But you're still going to experience a lot of uh, infrastructural challenges. I'm not sure if those cities are quite aware of what that looks like. They should definitely come to Seattle and take a look. And they may have. Take a look at the challenges. New York, I don't understand why Amazon chose it to be honest with you because, yeah, it's a big city and a lot of people like it. Um, it's a polar opposite to Seattle. Amazon said they want to choose a place where people in Seattle would want to move to, some of their folks want to move to. Uh, but New York and the New Yorker is a completely different person than your typical Seattle like, completely different. Um, but besides that, New York is a huge union city. Huge. I don't know how well that's going to fit with Amazon because Amazon is definitely not a union company. Um, and so I think that that's going to be something that is interesting. I don't know if, if Amazon is really fully aware of what that means, to be honest with you, because even the mayor and the governor were talking about this that they feel that Amazon will like this unionized city and that this is the way to go. I don't know. I don't know if it's New York is a good fit. Uh, to me, Boston probably makes a lot more sense if you're going to go north like that. Uh, New York doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, I'm just, personally, just based on a lot of things. But it can absorb those 25,000 jobs and the additional influx of people if it needed to. It also has a lot of those people there that can apply for jobs and that type of thing. So it can definitely handle it. The cost of living in both cities are comparable um, and they're similar to that of Seattle, a little bit more expensive. Uh, when you're buying a home, definitely more expensive in these two places. Apartments are a little bit more expensive as well. So it's not out of the realm. 25,000 jobs, $125,000 each. <clears throat> for each employee on average, not bad. But still, property tax is going to kill people because the cities have to pay for infrastructure. They have to do infrastructural improvements. Those are then going to be passed on to consumers. Some sort of a tax is going to come in there uh, and usually property tax are going to help because it's the biggest, heaviest one that they can put on you. Um, and so those go to help fund infrastructural improvements a lot of times. Sales tax is not enough. Income tax, I can see that. Here in Washington, we don't have an income tax. So we have to rely heavily on property tax and other things. So I think that they're going to see that in both Virginia and in New York, that property tax will start to push people out. That's what's happening in Seattle. The homelessness issue in Seattle is not just about people who are strung out on drugs or alcoholics or whatever. Yes, that does happen. And there's a lot of folks that fit that bill. There's a lot of folks that just are unemployed or something happened medically. And, you know, there's so many different circumstances. But you do have people who are homeless because <clears throat> they can't afford the price of their home. Right? I've talked about this. If you, some people can be approved by the bank to have a house for $700,000. And they get their approval letter. 
But they go to the realtor and say, you know, this is how much I can get. Well, realtors obviously want to try to get you right at that lo that line because it's more money for them. They don't care whether or not you can afford it. That's not their problem. Their problem is, let me get you a home and let me get it to this line if you allow me to because I'm going to make more money off of it. Well, the problem with that is, is that you can afford the house and that payment because you're right at that mark. But if anything changes, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Here, property taxes go up because of many different things, but mainly due to funding for Sound Transit, which is our regional transportation network, which involves rail and buses and many different things. Ferries, um, well, not ferries necessarily, because those are handled by Washington State. But <clears throat> that's basically what it's for. It's for the light rail system and the commuter rail system and the buses. Well, the property taxes go up to handle any sort of issue that involves expansion. And so since the light rail system is expanding throughout the region and they're building it in many different directions, the property tax have to keep going up because the land values go up and the building costs go up for building the, the lines to building the maintenance facilities and all of that stuff and the electric substations removing and changing different things. All these things go up because the region is so hot. So then, even though a project may have been $500 million to build, now it's $700 million, so they didn't anticipate that. So they pull it out of their, their budget to fix that particular area. But there's still several hundred million dollars in the hole. So what do they do? Well, Sound Transit has the ability to help to basically lobby to increase property tax. So then your property tax go up, right? Because we voted and said, yeah, go ahead and do that. Property tax go up to meet that because every year the cost of building here goes up, right? So it's kind of due to Amazon and other companies. So as a result, people who buy a home right at what they can afford, their payment goes up to pay for those taxes. Well, since their payment is going up, now they're starting to have to conserve on what they're spending. So that affects everything, right? You don't have as much disposable income to go and take trips or buy stuff and do the different things that you normally do. And eventually, every year, it keeps going up, going up, going up, and people can't afford the home. So then you have foreclosures, which happens a lot. And then people get forced out of their home. So homelessness also is due to that. Not all of it, but there are a lot of people who have mentioned that they're homeless due to not being able to afford their home due to property tax. In Seattle, there are, are huge areas where people of color has been pushed out. And there are places where there are black neighborhoods that no longer exist because of gentrification. And this is not just solely due to Amazon, but Amazon didn't help because everything went up and people can't afford it. You're looking at people who have been there forever when houses were $60,000 and now the houses are $600,000 and they can't afford the property tax. They may own the home, but if they're on a fixed income, they can't afford the property tax that's going to be leveled against that house. So they're forced out. And that happens again and again and again and again. That's even happening down here in Tacoma. Not as bad, but it's still happening. And you're seeing neighborhoods like Hilltop, historically black neighborhood, being slowly gentrified over. Downtown Tacoma, completely gentrified. Completely. Right? And it didn't take very long. So you're going to see that happen in places like D.C. and New York. It will happen. Again, don't understand the New York part because for Amazon going there because it is a union city. But we'll see what happens. Nashville. Now, this was a shock. I didn't know that they were going to choose Nashville or any city for a hub. But Nashville is going to get 5,000 jobs that pay about $150,000 on average um, in New York and D.C., it's 125000 on average. Nashville, 5,000 jobs on average, 150. Let me tell you something. In Nashville, which I grew up not far from Nashville, if you made $80,000 a year, $70,000 a year, you're doing really good. I mean, you're doing great. <laughs> you can do really, really well 
in Nashville, Tennessee off of a salary of $70,000 a year. And the houses there are not that expensive. Much more affordable. Everything there in comparison is by far cheaper. By far more affordable. Nashville's one of those new southern cities like Atlanta used to be back in the day and how Charlotte was. It's kind of like one of those new it cities. The south, especially even my hometown of Bowling Green, Kentucky, they're exploding in population. A lot of people are moving there. And so even Indianapolis and Columbus, they were trying to get a, well, Indianapolis especially was trying to get a uh, major league soccer team. And Nashville beat them to it. So Nashville will have three sports franchises. They have the Tennessee Titans. They have the NHL Predators. And now they're going to have some new Major League Soccer team. And they're getting Amazon. So to put that into perspective, 5,000 new jobs in downtown Nashville is a huge impact. That's not going to be as bad as if they were to absorb twenty five to 50,000 jobs that would have been insane for any city to absorb that would be insane um but five thousand is a little bit more manageable it's a bite-sized piece and it's going to have a positive impact for nashville it's a good thing hold on zara's home because she's sick so but anyway that's going to have a huge impact nashville on the other hand can keep spreading out if you look at Arlington, Virginia, and you're looking at New York, they can only build up. They can't spread out. Nashville still has farmland. You can go in any direction and there's farmland. So the developers can still build out. Homes can still be much more affordable. Prices are going to definitely go up. Yeah, property taxes are going to go up. but And they have to pay for all the new roads and infrastructure and things like that. Um, but... It's not as much of a challenge because you're having less employees that are going to be there and the city can definitely expand outward if they needed to, right? Which is a lot more cheaper to do. So that and they're getting paid a huge chunk of money. 150 is a lot of money anywhere, but definitely in Nashville. So to me, Nashville really and truly wins. It's interesting that Amazon's creating this new concept called a hub. I know they're in a lot of different cities. They've done this where they've actually added facilities and offices. Uh, so it could be that they're going to start having hubs in many different secondary cities. Who knows? Uh, Amazon will keep people guessing for a long time to come. And I think that that's great. Uh, but there's a bit of concern for the cities that did win. There's a, there's a concern. Also keep in mind, too, there are a lot of cities that didn't win, like Indianapolis and Columbus and Denver and all these other places, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. They didn't win Amazon's HQ2, but they said that they won because they've gotten attention from uh, other companies that are saying, hmm, if Amazon was considering you, then maybe we should give you a second look. Um, so that's good. But Amazon also won, too, because they were able to get statistics and information and data from 200 and something cities all over the country, free. They didn't have to pay for that. Traffic reports and analysts and all that stuff, all of that information is expensive. And and all of the, the, the data that they were able to get that was done for them, packaged for them, sent to them, they got it all for free. So to be honest with you, Amazon really won. They got information from Canadian cities, American cities and even in Mexico. They got data from all these different places for free. And so Amazon benefits from that because now they can use that for marketing and different strategies, different programs as well. So there's a win-win there. Um, it's interesting. We'll see what happens. I don't think this is going to impact Seattle's housing market. People here don't think so either. Again, Amazon has 11 million square feet of office space, more than any company in the country, more so than a lot of companies in the world in Seattle. Seattle has the biggest, it's the biggest company town in the, in the country, and it has 6 million of that is leased space. So Amazon leases 6 million of that, and they own about 4 million square feet, and they're adding more buildings as they go. They're also having facilities in Bellevue and different places. So I don't think Amazon's going to go anywhere. 
I don't think the housing market's gonna crash or anything here due to these different locations Amazon's choosing. Amazon's growing hyper fast. And there's other things in the pipeline that they have that they're planning on too that they haven't even really talked much about. But there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of jobs. They're approaching a huge number of employees just in this region alone. So I think this is a win-win. Uh, I think that it gives cities a, a new way of, of marketing themselves, too. Uh, they they fought it out pretty hard and still lost, but I think that they gain a lot of information on what to do next when they're trying to lure another big company. So anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys are having a great day and a great start to your week. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Hershnelly. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.